Hey everybody, Andre here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make custom time signatures in Sibelius Ultimate. One of the things that Sibelius uh, has trouble with is getting outside of its own parameters. So if you want to have music written in multiple time signatures at the same time, or if you want to get creative with different meters that maybe aren't, you know, super standard. It's going to be very difficult. So you sort of have to coax the program into doing what you want it to do. So I just wanted to show you some workflow techniques of how I achieve this. I hope this will be useful for you. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is just to select um, a score preset that has multiple different lines on it just so we can show how this is going to look um, with different parts. So I'm just going to choose string quartet and just to start uh, we're going to start with 4-4 four, four time nothing crazy and we're just gonna we're not even going to call it anything we're just going to go ahead and start. So before we start I just want to preface this all by saying um, these tips are designed for score layout and making your scores look really really good um, they won't work as well with um, playback just because we're going to be making Sibelius do things that it doesn't necessarily want to do um, but with that being said uh, it's relatively easy to get custom time signatures in here um, but you do have to play around with it a little bit so let's just take for example we've started in 4-4 and let's just change meters every other bar um, and let's keep it standard for now so what we're going to do is we're going to just select the second bar and what I'm doing is I'm hitting T and I'm just going to select another time signature and let's just say 3-4 for now and then the next one I'm going to just select another time signature 2 4 and then i'm going to select just i don't know 6 8 let's be let's just stop there and i'm just going to break the system just so we have this to work with all right so now that we have our time signature set up here's our goal we're going to have the first and second violin to retain these time signatures but we want the viola and the cello to have different time signatures that correspond with what's happening above. So if you just take a look at what we have here, I mean, we have four, four, three, four, two, four, six, eight. So this is 12 quarter notes total, right? 12 quarter notes that are gonna last us from the downbeat here to the very end here. So I'm just gonna randomly choose that I want in the violas and the cellos to have one measure of 5-4 and then a measure of 7-4 at the same time as you know the stuff that we've assigned already so you'll notice if I try to do that if I try to isolate it viola okay viola let's do 5-4 it just changes everything so that's not gonna work we're going to have to get creative so the most important thing here is knowing how to hide stuff so you want to select this and you can either right click and go down to hide or show and you can click that notice how it gets grayed out you won't see that anymore so if you go to print preview you'll notice that it's gone so that's how that works or what I do is I use the hotkey control shift H and it really quickly does that without having to go to the drop down menu and what we're going to do is actually we're going to do that for each of these. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is go over to the text tab, which is the fourth one from the left, and we're going to go to this format uh, area and go click on this little drop down menu. And why I want to see this is just to show you what fonts we're going to be using so that they match up with what Sibelius is using for time signatures. So this right here, the main music font, is the font that Sibelius defaults to time signatures, among other things. So Opus Standard, okay. 
the next thing is to start putting down some numbers. So you can do this one of two ways. You can either go over here to Styles, click this button right here, Technique. Notice how your arrow becomes blue. Just click somewhere and now you can type. Or what I do is I do the hotkey, Control plus T. It's a lot faster. And you're just gonna put number four. All right, so the first thing you should notice is this four is obviously not the same as that four. Let's make them the same. So remember what the font was. Go to this drop down menu and find Opus Standard. All right, that is the same exact font, but notice how much smaller it is. So let's make it bigger. 14, not quite there yet. 18, a little bit closer. That might actually be it. Let's zoom in. Let's zoom way in. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to slide this over. And I actually think it might be too small. It might be too small. 19 is the magic number. So this, of course, will change um, with different score layouts. But for what we had here, that worked. So you might have to play around with it a little bit. And then what I like to do is I just get real close and make sure that there's no gray spots. That looks pretty close to me. I can't see any gray. Okay, so we have it. Four. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit Control C, copy that. And I'm just going to paste it right there. And I'm going to do the same exact thing as I did before. Now notice how it doesn't want to go. No matter how many times I click the up arrow, see the shadow there? Yeah, this is magnetic layout for you. So what you want to do is you want to right click, go down to magnetic layout, and hit off. Now you're not going to be strapped in to what Sibelius wants you to do. All right. That looks pretty good. Oh, let's move it a little over. So you can finagle this as you need to, obviously. Um, but for now, that looks pretty darn close to what we had before. So let's now, uh, just for good measure, I'm also going to turn the magnetic layout here. Okay, so we have our template. Four, four. I'm going to select both of these. Uh, what I'm doing is I hit the first one, and then I'm holding down Control and hitting the next one. And I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go down to Violin 2 and do the same thing. I actually hit it on the first try. Uh, it never happens. All right, so now that we have the first measure, we're just going to finish this. So I'm just going to make sure I have it copied, and I'm just going to go through and fix everything. So 4-4, four, four. should probably adjust the top number, make it a 3. I'm going to have to adjust ever so slightly as we go. Again, I'm going to copy and paste. Makes things a lot faster. Copy and paste. Again, I'm going to change the top number to a 2 and adjust it back. Things are going very quickly. Moving very well. And then finally, 6, 8. We're going to have to adjust both numbers. So let's do the 2 first. Let's do 6. And let's do eight. And we're going to adjust both of these at the same time, just to make it so. OK. So now we have four measures of time signatures. And look, it's almost like nothing happened. Uh, the 6, 8 down here probably needs some adjusting. So let me just do that. That looks looks. Okay, right. We can, we can futz with this uh, to our heart's desire later. But the point is, we have our original time signatures good to go. Okay, so now what I said before is I wanted to start with five four here, and then have seven four. So let's go down and make it so. Five. Sometimes it changes both. It's very weird. Four. And we can, again, we can adjust that to our heart's desire as we go. All right. 
five four and four four at the same time so there you have it two time signatures at the same time all right so you're probably thinking great well we did this but how do i know when to start my next time signature well we're just going to measure it out i'm just going to put down five quarter notes here and then we're going to start the measure after that so i'm going to put the first quarter note down and i just want you to take a look at what happens notice how everything moves over we probably if we were being smart, which I wasn't, probably should have put down one note first. But we didn't do that, so what we can do is actually just adjust everything back to where it should be. Oh, by the way, the way to move things quickly like that is just to hold down Control and an arrow key. All right, now we fixed it. Great. So we're going to, again, put down some notes and notice how it happened again because we started a new measure and that's how Sibelius likes to do things so we're gonna adjust that back well, probably too much adjusting holding down control sometimes yields strange results so I will just fix it in real time just so you know that this isn't exactly an easy process okay so now we have five measures or five quarter notes five measures oh my five quarter notes here and what we're going to do is we're going to set up our next time signature right there so let's select that copy it over and i'm just going to change that five to seven voila we have seven four and we can do the same thing down here All right, so now we have our two different time signatures, but there's one glaring issue, the bar line. So again, like I said before, we're trying to make Sibelius do something that it doesn't want to do. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to select this bar line and just like we did before with hiding the time signatures, we're going to try to hide this. Whoops, it's not working. Why isn't it working? Well, I'll tell you why. Bar lines are a little bit different. So you have to adjust them manually. So if you go to Notations and go to Bar Line, you can select what kind of bar line you would like. So you can do all sorts of stuff here, but what we're looking for is invisible. Now there's no more bar line. Now notice you'll have to adjust some things, right? Because whenever Sibelius does any kind of operation, it automatically makes adjustments. There are ways to turn this off, uh, but that's a topic for another video in its entirety. I like to keep them on because it does do a pretty good job of keeping things nice and tidy. But now what I'm looking at here is uh, an eyeball distance between this quarter and this quarter that looks like that. You can turn on rulers. I've covered this in a previous video um, to make it really, I mean, as perfect as possible, but nobody has time for that. Now we have no bar line. And we're just going to do the same thing over here. And we're going to do the same thing over here. Now, just keep in mind, we can go back and adjust stuff as we need. So even if it doesn't look perfect now, we can change it later. Like I'm just going to adjust this ever so, slightly, ever so slightly now so I don't lose my mind. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to make some lines. So let's hit L. And we're going to find vertical line. That's pretty far down here under lines. Vertical line. And we're just going to trace over this other line now we're gonna just make it perfect okay we're gonna make it absolutely perfect and we're just gonna trace right down to the end there it's pretty good and we're gonna do the same thing over here again 
sometimes it really doesn't want to do what I ask it to do. And one more. Perfect. So now we have some bar lines for the violins. Now we're going to need to do the same thing for our viola and cello. Bar line. That's pretty good. We can adjust that later if we need to. And then we have this bar line at the end. Perfect. So the result is that we have what looks like 4-4, four, 3-4, four, 2-4, four, four, and 6-8 at the same time as 5-4 and 7-4. Now this worked out really, really well because mathematically, you know, it's the same amount of quarter notes up here as down here. So the playback won't be adjusted so much which is really, really nice. It, you can do much more complicated things. Like you can take this 5-4 and turn it into like, I don't know, 12-16. And then the math is going to get all screwed up. And so the, the, the playback will, you might have to, you know, you might have to take it with a grain of salt. But the point is, look at this clean thing. And if we go to our print preview just to see what the score would look like, we have what looks like a beautiful thing. So let's zoom in and check that out. We have custom time signatures. And it really didn't take us very long at all. Of course, just know that you know you could probably fix some of these a little bit more. Our six eights are a little squirrely. And this stuff is probably a little too far from the bar line. This stuff is probably too far from the left. So you're going to have to do manual adjustments. But this is the way that I found to make custom time signatures in Sibelius Ultimate. If uh, this video was helpful for you, please do drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I hope to see you on the next video.